Hey. Hey, Glenn. What's up? It's hard to get in contact with you these days. Whose whose phone number is this? This is my house number. You don't recognize it? Three three one six three one three three one five one five five. No, don't remember it. <laughs> oh, that was that's my house number. I don't call people every day, to, so I wouldn't remember. Uh, okay. So what's happening? Um. Actually, Dana's supposed to come in right now. Yeah. And, uh, hold on, I'm just... Well, if Sal looked at your number and said that's not one of Keeley's approved and didn't answer, so... Oh, well, I've been... The only thing that's changed, I, I guess, uh, there was, um... They... For some reason, my phone couldn't receive calls, and... My mom bought a new phone, but I don't. She didn't change that, the number. That may be why it didn't show up on the list of approved. But the number didn't change. I don't know. I've been seeing. There's been stuff going on, like the the site that we use to upload. You know, all the talks they've uh, blocked a lot of the older ones. Yeah. Now me and Dana and like. Uh, Dispute with them trying to retrieve those calls. Hey, Glenn. Uh, I know the feeling. Hey, <laughs> George yes. or uh, Danny? Dana. Yes, Danny. It's me. Yeah. The, the both both of you are on your own phones, or yeah, we're both on our own phones calling in. On the, uh, okay. Viewers. Anybody else there? No, that's it. It's me you and him. Okay. And my bell and you know those. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was a little late, but the cell called and said they had deleted a number that they didn't recognize, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I looked at the phone myself, and I saw, well, they called twice, then they called one more time. It must be somebody that Jerd knows. Yeah. yeah. Your hunch is right. Your, <laughs> your hunch is <laughs> So, I'm. So, here. have you guys been freezing? Oh yeah, it was seven uh, seven degrees. I don't know what that is in Celsius for you guys, but it was cold. Seven was, below or above? Below. No, no actually, uh, seven. Well, right seven now, below? Right, yeah, right now it's negative eight, but feels like negative fifteen. So, uh, and so that's uh, Celsius. So. Yeah. We had negative 28 last night. Wow. Felt like 33. Man. And that's been like that for two weeks. Uh, everything has been ranging from about 20 negative to 30-something negative. I have never in my 76 years tomorrow... Uh-huh. Uh, Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Rebirth. Ever since I can remember, I don't remember this many cold days in a row. Yeah. It's, you know, we've had every possible temperature, but usually it's a day, and mm. then it goes off for two, three days a week. <laughs> And then you might get it back again. But here it's been since basically before Christmas. Every day ends up at a low of uh, 20 below or whatever. Well, it's been like that all. In the house, it's um, uh, never gone down below 8 below. I would say eight below Celsius in uh, in the bedroom. In the house, it's gone down as much as uh, I think it's eighteen below in the uh, in the living room. Hmm. So, so uh, 
It's been uh, pretty frosty. Yes, yeah, survivable, mean, although, and I'm still here, much to their dismay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling a guy on the internet on a video. There's a comment section under like, the videos of your workshop in I think 2008. Yeah. And, um, a guy was asking if oh, is Glenn still alive? Yes. I guess he hasn't heard any new material. Is that a guy from uh, Ontario? I don't know. I, I, I didn't investigate. I didn't look at his uh, page. But um, I, he's not the first person to say that to me. He's like the second. But with the weather, it's, like, it's unusual because um, it's snowing in places down south that don't usually get snow. Right. Yeah. Like in Virginia, Florida, North Carolina. Yeah. Well, it's to get them used to Antarctica. Huh. <laughs> See, they they uh, they're going to spend a lot of time on islands around Antarctica, uh, maybe even as much as ever, you know, eternity. So. Uh, Got to get them used to it before they go down because cold is a, le- a lot more damaging to the spirit than fire. Fire kills you. Mm-hmm. Cold makes you suffer. I know. Mm. Yes. I, you know, speaking of Antarctica, I, I didn't look into it, but I heard something about, like, uh, Edward Snowden saying something about Antarctica. He was supposedly exposing something about Antarctica. I don't know. I don't know if you've heard anything. Yeah, you haven't told me anything. You heard something about Ed Snowden, and you don't know. Yeah, it was something about Edward Snowden. Snowden exposing something about Antarctica. I don't know how. I didn't investigate it. Oh. Uh, it was something I heard. I, I was wondering if, if you heard anything about that. Of course. <laughs> you know where Antarctica is, eh? Yeah. It's, the uh, map is upside down, mm-hmm. and Antarctica is on top. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And when the males chase the females, they escape to South America. That's why they're called Amazons. Mm -hmm. And then, if you keep on running, you have a peninsula that allows you to jump from Chile to Antarctica. And in Antarctica, when they first went there, there was no ice. It was a green island. And when it started to snow years and years later and get colder and colder, the option was you die by being in Antarctica, which is just an iceberg coming, Mm -hmm. or you go back into caves. And if you go into caves on Antarctica... You will find some of those caves are part of shields, which are the original continents, and they protect you from the heat and pressures of the normal continent. And they made, over thousands of years, made their way down to the Moho discontinuity, which allowed them to create a lifestyle beneath the plates of the earth, sitting on top of the mantle. From what I've calculated, it would be somewhere in the vicinity of 30 miles thick. Now, try to imagine you're living at the bottom of a long tunnel 
in a place that you can expand in all directions. What do you start doing? You start digging tunnels. <coughs> we know today, and we have the equipment, atomic equipment, which they invented, which can drill a hole of 20 feet in diameter at five miles per hour. Now, imagine if you have eight, 16, 24,000 years going through like a, a bug, you can cover the entire earth. What do you, uh, what do you remember seeing in 1967 at the World's Fair in Montreal was the, the uh, uh, place where the U.S. built their dome. What do you call that? It's got five corners. The geodesic dome? You something geodesic like? dome. Now, forget what you see at the World's Fair, which is an activity going on inside the entire geodesic dome, which becomes the outside wall. And imagine that the walls are where you live. Because underground, you can't go inside those walls. That's the mantle of the earth, and you just melt. Mm -hmm. So, but if you have a geodesic dome, tunnel structure, and 16,000 years, you can drill the entire world easily at five miles an hour. And what do you do? You decide how you want your structure to be on the surface at a later date. And where do you want them to put their important things you drill up, and in that drill up, which would be within one of those original shield continents, mm -hmm. you, you end up like an ant coming out of a hole, and, and you're throwing out dirt until you get to the surface, and then what do you have? Parliament Hill, Capitol Hill, Seven Hills of Rome. Every place you have a hill, Montreal, in the middle of the town, it wasn't built by accident. It was built from below so that contact could be maintained with their employees, which they were going to put on the surface. Go around the world, and you'll see that all the important places have hill. Either extinct volcanoes or man-made structures from below. in a geodesic pattern around the world. Now, of course, you cannot expect that somebody who's been underground for the better part of 20-some uh, thousand years 24,000 years, I think, to be exact, uh, 
It was 24,000 B.C. when they went underground, so it's 26,000 years now. They will not look like you and I. Especially when they're able to genetically engineer, which they proved when they separated the genders between man and woman from a body of a woman that used to be hermaphroditic. What you will have is people who don't need uh, to hear or see in the same manner we do. Hearing comes from tunnels. You don't have to look around. It's down that one or down that one or down that one. So you don't need the kind of ears we have. But you need to see far, and you get bigger eyes. You need to know more, and you get a bigger brain. And people describe that as UFO, alien life living on some other planet. If you're going to build a uh, vehicle to go to the surface and you're starting at the bottom of a hole, what shape would you give that vehicle? Can't have a runway. It's a hole. It's a volcano that's extinct or a hole they made. You would make it round like a saucer. And every now and then, you have to go and check on the people that you've put there to make sure that your genetic engineering is, in fact, functioning the way you want it. You have reports from your media that you own up on the surface. You get other reports from your billionaires, which you own who send information on the surface. But, you know, investigators always want firsthand. And eventually you have to go look. And eventually you're going to be seen. And eventually you have to write a story that matches what people saw as if they were from a foreign planet. Life changed by going underground after the Neanderthalers chased the Amazon women into Antarctica. And there began a new stage. If you remember what we've talked about so far, Mm -hmm. human beings, with the help of cats, were born because cats, whether you call them tigers, lions, jaguars, panthers, cats are the only animal that would pick up a crying baby and take it with them in their cave and feed it. And let's say, and it really doesn't matter the furthest day back, let's say 130,000 years B.C., Aphroditic women, based on a story which you read about and, and see in movies when you're a kid, 
called Tarzan of the Jungle. But the key is Tarzan came from a woman and therefore is not the beginning in the same way as woman is not the end because woman is called Eve in the Bible. Adam just comes from the word medi. It means media, the reporters, the people who gather the information and send it down. Not only do they gather the information, they hide information. They call the information. And in order to have that possibility, they had to develop rats, bureaucrats. And the bureaucrats do their culling at the first line of sight. And and some other people much higher up, like McGill University, do the culling at a much higher level. And those things that merit being sent down below get an award, Pulitzer Prize, Nobel Prize, Olympics. And once they receive it down below, they can work with it. Well, I put it to you that the system evolved over thousands of years, somewhere around 100,000 years, and the people living on the planet at that time were probably in the low millions. And they came to a conclusion with everything they knew by then. that if you want to control, you have to control everything. Not just your local residents on the surface of the earth, but all of the places that might be used for residents in the future, in the universe itself. And therefore, What they required was scientific expedition (coughs) that would, in fact, prove or disprove all of the theories of the people who would be on the surface. To do that, you need laboratories on the surface, and then you need research teams that go out and explore. Once you come to that conclusion, you then have to make judgment. In order to prove or disprove all theories, of the possibilities of what creation created there, you have to use laboratories and universities to test out everything and explorers to go find out the things about what you don't know about yet. But you must control the information in a manner in which only you know it. So by the time they went underground, 24,000 B.C., They had a plan. 
And the plan was We must make as many people as are required to be guinea pigs of different sorts in that new environment. But we must control their genetics in such a manner as they only concentrate on the things they most love to do, which will be assigned to them in their genetics as something they would most love to do. And we have to make enough in order to get the answers we need to all the questions about all the theories that will exist. And to do that, we need approximately, from start to finish, 15 to 16 billion people. And we must be able to achieve our goal at the halfway mark. So that on this planet, from the year 2000 or thereabouts, give or take, A.D., you have half the population they made, genetically speaking, who have lived and died. And their genetics are waiting for replantation. Then you have the other half, which is alive today, whose future is irrelevant to the people down below. They can now be disposed of. And then you see the plotting of their genetic engineering plan in what is known as the Big 8-0. Did you guys see the pattern that is in the Bible as a Big 8-0? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, what you, you mean the, the genealogy chart or? Yeah. Yeah. Every one of those names on that chart, starting at the beginning with Adam, every one of those names is a genetic engineering change. And as they change the genetics, they go out further and further from the point of beginning until, oops, they realize they went too far. So then they start a different pattern of genetic engineering to bring it back in. And they come back in and they hit the middle ground underneath, above them would be media, Adam, Betty, looking down on where they are, but don't recognize they've arrived there, so they keep on going. Until, up they realize, oh, we got to go back because we went too far. So they start going back again. As time goes on, they end up creating the number eight by a pattern which will lead down to zero at the bottom and return in the opposite direction. If they decide that number eight is the right place to stop, 
Now the, the the problem is to get rid of all of the ones they don't want, and they start from that bottom point on a new journey, which at the bottom makes a zero. Eight O. Nato. Play to. Eight O. Tomato. Eight O. Potato. What do you feed him? Tomatoes or potatoes? When they're really hungry. That's the bottom line. Who is the biggest potato deliverer all over the world today that comes from New Brunswick? The McCain family make potatoes in the Maritimes And that's what this latest storm, Genesis, is all about. The storm is to slap the McCain family on the back of the head and say, you are allowing an attack on our cat. The ones who made it possible for all of us to be here are cat. And you take cat food ordered by Jennifer Keeley and you hang on to it until it freezes like a rock and then you deliver it to a place that is going through the coldest days ever well we got news for you you can call your company same day worldwide but we'd rather you change it to Someday, worldwide, but not with you. The post office, the insurance companies, the bureaucracies of corporations, governments, and agencies, are all in on the big plan and are all facing the same slap on the back of the head. Each one of them is going to live out a process allowed but not created by creation. but created by the person they call God. What is God backwards? Dog. Dogs and cats don't usually get along too well. What is a female dog called a bitch. bitch. (laughs) We are in the midst of a process ending period. Not the end of the world, but the end of the world as we know it. You got it? Yeah. There. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. 
Everybody from New Jersey to New Brunswick has been told this week, Genesis. Genesis. Attached to the word bomb. Yep. Bombastic. Bombastic. Bomba Genesis. Why did you use, choose those words? The purpose is to tell their people, we're done with you. You get blasted out, and we create a new genetically engineered population that we will use to control the exploration of space from Antarctica. And all the people who are masters of their own little heavens by causing problems to the people who love cats are going to disappear. And the others will be one of two groups. Either they have no intuition and therefore are of no value to the future of anything better than what exists on Earth, or they do. Obviously, the people with intuition about what is really going on have a much greater value, and since there is no place to go to on Earth, they will be taken to the fifth dimension which is another universe to start the process again, bringing with them seven and a half billion people or so who have lived and died and didn't cause the problem. And a lot of cats. (laughs) We've been told to be prepared for the year 2020. 2020 in an optimist chair means you see clearly, you understand clearly, because people like me and you and Danny and anybody that has had signs of intuition will gather and move on. In their world, the two words, love you, is used instead of good day or goodbye or see you next week or what have you because it means live longer. Love is live. You live longer. It's not possible to give all of the details to anybody unless they have some intuition that allows them to jump steps and remember enough to move much faster than a classroom. So intuition, let me put it this way. When I first met the cell, what do you think was the obvious question? that I asked. Who are you? 
No. I couldn't see who they were because they were people I knew who were dead. Where are you from? (laughs) What are you doing here? (laughs) Why me? My question was, why me? Mm. And the answer is tenacity. You stick to something you understand and you move it forward tenaciously and with respect for other people. You don't try shoving it down their throats, but you wait for the ones with intuition to ask questions and you answer in a manner in which you are able to because that's what you have gathered over your lifetime. Respect and tenacity are two important key factors in what we're talking about. No shoving like religion does. No scare tactics. Just information. And those who deserve to move forward will do so. And they eventually, at other meetings, they said, now that you understand that you were programmed before you were born, you acted according to your program, but your tenacity And your intuition allowed you to make giant leaps in understanding to the point of overstanding. And you became the first person that we have shared information with. Now go tell Jennifer, because she's the opposite of you. And you need to have both opposite points of view brought to a point in the middle. You stop doing what your program told you to do. You worked on resisting the triggers that are used by the system to turn you on and off. Everybody says, somebody shot somebody today, and it was my neighbor next door, and I don't understand it because he would never do that or she would never do that. Those people who say that don't have the intuition of understanding the genetic powers that were inserted into that human being that could be triggered in opposite directions at any time according to the will of the media who wanted a story for today. And everybody who follows the media is basically following their program. Mm -hmm. When you look at something and listen to something and smell something and taste something and hear something, you start building contrary opinions that you're afraid to speak about because it's not popular. But tenacity. For those who have intuition, being popular is not the point. Mm. Being right is the point. (laughs) And whether you live as a billionaire or as a street person, when you're right, 
you will be taken care of forever. Eternity is a long, long time. Much more important than being well off. Eternity for those who will suffer in the prison camps around Antarctica is a long time. They shut off my power. That meant no more water, running water, no more toilets the way we have them, no more heating of soup on an oven top. None of these things. And yet, unhappy as I am at the misery that that creates. I'm 76 years old, and I started on this journey when I was 47 or something, 45, somewhere in there. Being right has always kept me focused. Seeking Reality, rather than media-driven bullshit, has always been my purpose. Because I have seen with my own eyes, heard with my own ears, tasted with my own mouth, everything smelt like shit. Not the glorification made of shit by the media, but the actual presence of DNA in the things you consume and then is extracted from you, just like an O. Henry bar. Oh, Henry Barr. Buy yourself an old Henry Barr and you'll see the closest thing to a turd (laughs) that you could ever imagine. And in there is peanuts and caramel and chocolate. And it tastes terrific. But it is a model of where DNA is extracted from in order to put it into the personality of the next batch of people they're going to make. How many words do you know have two H's in a row? O. Henry, O. H. H. E. N. Like a hen laying eggs. R. Y. Two in one. Exclamation mark. Hey, I just learned something here today. <laughs> Go and buy yourself an old Henry, unwrap it gently, put it on a plate in the middle of the table, and examine it. And then the next time you go to the toilet, don't just flush it, look. How do you build a new person? You build it with DNA. And that DNA can be extracted from dead bodies buried in a cave 17,000 B.C. 
and it started a new process, a new location on the chart of the big A-O. But that chart shows something that very few people have stopped to figure out in the Bible. By the way, the chart was put into the Bible in 1881, and that Bible, Holy Bible, that Holy Bible won a prize before it was even launched of being the best Bible ever put out in 1882, and I have one right here. And that chart is in there. And the process is demonstrated by coins. And coins have an important part for people with intuition to learn. My uncle, Bernard Sige, was the foreman at the Mint on Sussex Drive in Ottawa. And he told me the entire story about coins. He's in the cell today. My uncle, Wilfred Sege, another of my mother's brothers, was an executive at the top echelon of Canada Post. They killed him. He broke his arm, I'm told, and went to the hospital and died from it. He figured something out that he didn't know, that the spy network of the world is the post office. And it acts and calls information out of your mail in a manner in which you would never have believed unless you tested it with your own hands. And what I did was I took an envelope to the post office addressed to the RCMP in Ottawa. And in the letter... I said, please pass this information out to the uh, Special Federal Investigation Branch of the RCMP on Cooper Street in Ottawa, because this concerns the government of Canada, and you won't see the information sent by the bureaucrats. They call it and destroy it. And when I handed that envelope to the girl behind the counter, she did the normal stuff they do with an envelope and then charged me whatever the stamp was and turned around and put the envelope on the counter behind her for the mail people who come around and pick them up. Immediately, out from behind the door that hides the inside of the post office in Kempville, a brunette came that I recognized as being there for a long time. And she took my envelope, flipped it over, and stamped it twice. What the stamp was is irrelevant. But that envelope was sent to Ottawa because I put an Ottawa address on it. And it was opened by the bureaucrats. And they took the envelope and they sent it to Toronto. Now, Federal Special Investigation Branch cannot be found in Toronto. Federal. Ottawa is the capital. And then 
in Toronto, they sent me back the letter saying, we don't deal with that. Now, imagine if you're the prime minister of a country and your bureaucrats are acting as colors of your information. Imagine what that means. It means you'll never have it. Are you guys still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Okay, somebody's yep. calling, but I hear it. they can wait a minute. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's this lesson that I learned at the post office is now being used by the girls in the post office, same people in Kempville, to misdirect any of the things that are being sent to me for my survival or the cat's survival. They have taken cat food and sent it all across the country and and hand it over to McCain's, who deal with potatoes and shouldn't even have anything to do with me. Uh, and during a period of the last two, three weeks, they have carried around uh, cat food to the point where since it freezes inside of two or three days, you can imagine what 10 or 15 or 20 days can do to cat food, exactly what you can imagine. Frozen stiff can't be eaten in a place that has no electricity and is occupied by a 76-year-old man who has no transportation uh, functioning and depends upon other people, such as taxis, which basically cost $100 round trip for me to go to the post office to pick up something that Jennifer paid to have delivered to my door. And can I turn to the police? They are the ones who kidnapped her without a warrant on behalf of the bureaucrats on the border. Can I sit in a hospital and watch Tom, the tenant in the house and a friend of 15 years, looking absolutely happy, signing a lottery ticket that I bought for him in the morning, and then having a doctor, female doctor from India, come in and say, what do you think about do not resuscitate? Excuse me? If you're talking about Tom... Tom's not sick. Tom is not feeding himself on purpose because he's being manipulated by a genetic engineering cloud underneath our house. Four hours later, phone call. We tried everything, but Tom's dead. We got to get a coroner in from Ottawa, they said. The coroner comes in. What does he see? He sees a man lying on a gurney. Head off the end of the gurney so that his mouth is wide open. Jennifer is a director of nursing. She said one of the first things they do is they close the mouth and shut the eyes. 
the guy lying on the gurney has a sheet over him and something covering his penis. Foreskin is where you get DNA to match up with what you already have. It's much better than fingerprints. DNA comes out of the mouth. Third thing is, the man lying on the gurney has socks on. Not socks that that you would normally see on Tom, but because he wears boots in the winter in Canada, it's good to have two pairs of socks. These were the socks that were underneath. Sorry, I got it backwards. The socks that were on top and the socks underneath were missing. What do you get off toenails? Fungus. DNA. Oh. Whenever you want to be sure of somebody's DNA, you don't take it from one place. You take it from two or three places. And a coroner, of course, has all the time in the world. And then he... Hmm? Hmm? Hello? 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 It's me and you. Damn. Damn it. Should I try calling him again? Maybe give it like a second. He might not realize it yet. Maybe his phone died. Yeah, I was having to. Hmm? Oh. Uh, let's give it another like few seconds so we can just disconnect. I guess they didn't like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought your phone died or something. It it uh it just shut down. I'm looking at the screen, and it just shut down. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. Bell Canada. Yep. <laughs> Bell. Bell eight. So all of that is basically to say Don't believe what people tell you. Go on a search of your own. All the information is available under your own context. You don't need me as living proof. You need you as living proof that that you want to find the truth. And if you do... You know what the cell told me? Mm -hmm. Apart from uh, the the statement that they made that I had tenacity, well, I'm waiting. Apart uh, apart from the statement (laughs) that you said you had tenacity, yeah. Um. Okay, from what I know about you, you are... You, Glenn Keeley, earned our visit. Uh, you, Glenn Keeley, earned to live longer. You, Glenn Keeley, learned. If you do not learn... You do not deserve. And therefore, you're the only one we've talked to so far. That was in the year somewhere between 2006 and 2010. I don't remember the exact date. You earned it. And I'm telling you guys, 
If you want to live longer rather than being left behind because you're not part of the problem, but you're not going to be part of the solution, if you do not earn that right by asking all of the questions that you need answered to convince yourself and to use your well-defined intuitive senses to come to a conclusion that the world run by the media is full of shit. Well, that's going to take... In more ways than one. Yeah, because that's, that's going to take uh, a lifetime. Because that's what it's seen the... You're born at 40. Yeah. You get a chance to do it from the beginning. I wasted seven years or so of that 40 before I caught on. I'm 76 going on 133. (laughs) I'm half the age of Canada. (laughs) I'm trying hard to catch up to it. However, they keep moving ahead at the same speed I move forward. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to go on a journey at the end of your period on this earth. A journey that will be eternal and much pleasanter than anything you can imagine here. Mm. Time's up. Hey, Glenn. See you there. (laughs) You're welcome. Live longer. Yeah. Live longer. I guess until next time. Until yep. Stay warm. Bye for now. Love you. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. All right. All right.